Hey, hello everybody. Uh, let's talk about uh, information illiter illiteracy or information literacy on the internet. That is what you need to know to be able to discern good information from bad that you may find on the internet. Okay, so this is a new field. The internet is new. Uh, we didn't have the internet at all when uh, I started uh, graduate school, uh, or it was just in California when I started graduate school. Uh, and, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, it was not really what it is today. So it's new, but then again, the idea of finding information uh, is an old field. And uh, so we'll talk about the new parts and the older parts of this uh, field. So information literacy is about finding information and then evaluating that information. Uh, you can find lots of information. What is, are you looking in the right place? Is this the right information? And then you have this information. How do you know it's good? And so uh, this has been the older parts in that uh, college students forever have been trained to do this. However, now we need to recognize that we have this electronic uh, world. We have the social media. We have the internets. So we have to uh, expand our understanding of finding information and evaluating it evaluating it from the library to the internet. And so here's the problem. Uh, you know, uh, the lockdown protests, uh, people reporting that uh, media bots are, you know, influ influencing uh, political races, are influencing how people plan uh, to live their lives, how they plan to respond to the COVID pandemic, how they plan to vote. Uh, and this is the key issue in terms of the new version of information literacy. There's a lot of information out of there that out there that is uh, just designed to confuse us. And so that's a, a kind of a new wrinkle. Uh, in general, it, in the past, it was harder for college students to find really bad information. And what it uh, appears to be in 2020 is that it's much easier for college students to find bad information. So that's the context of what we're going to be talking about. So that's our introduction. And so I'm going to talk about the internet. Uh, start out with Wikipedia and then uh, web pages and social media posts. Okay, so what's wrong with Wikipedia besides their mascot? The answer, nothing. The only thing wrong with Ma Wikipedia is their mascot. Wikipedia Chan or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> so nothing is wrong with Wikipedia. Uh, in fact, if you see here, I do a standing, I have a standing uh, independent study, Psych 430, where if you want to do an independent study and edit Wikipedia, you can do it. Uh, here are three students from a couple years ago. And here are the pages that they created on Wikipedia. Uh, there is the Wikipedia Psychology Initiative, uh, which is an initiative of psychologists and psychology professors across the world who are devoted to expanding and improving uh, the articles on uh, Wikipedia about psychology and we work with that project and uh, so I would not be doing this project if there was something intrinsically wrong or incorrect or unethical about Wikipedia and uh, the answer you know I, I have to explain this in detail because I know some professors actually bar you from using Wikipedia uh, they say Wikipedia is bad and you shouldn't go near it and I don't know where they're coming from and so I have to explain why I'm right and they're wrong. Uh, look at Wikipedia. Wikipedia cites all their information and on the same page they give you the references to look it up and oftentimes 
all you have to do is click and you can find the information. Uh, so this is actually better than the old style encyclopedias that we had uh, when I was in college uh, to get into uh, you know the citations and references for an encyclopedia article you had to go to a special uh, edition or volume excuse me of the encyclopedia here it's just right here uh, so first off uh, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia it is a well laid out encyclopedia in that it shows you the citations and it makes it very very easy to find and follow up those citations any college professor would want this type of work coming from a student also notice here there's a tab for talk what is it well if you click it what you will get is a uh, discussion board where the editors of Wikipedia are discussing issues involved in the web page or the article page that uh, they're writing about. So, uh, you know, what are the issues? So not only can you see the citations, but you can see some of the issues that the editors had argued about as they develop this article. And then finally, if you click on the view history tab you will see the history of the page that is uh, the current page uh, is from August of 2020 uh, what was it like in June and what were all the iterations between those two times uh, who has been monopolizing editing the page and what exactly did they change and in fact not only can you just look at their short description about what they changed but you can actually click this button and it will show you and compare the two different versions so you can see exactly in different colored text what they changed. Uh, Wikipedia is a very good encyclopedia. Uh, it is a free encyclopedia, but if you use it, I would encourage you to donate to it, five or ten dollars. Uh, if it's useful to you, you should pay for it. Uh, I donate to Wikipedia every uh, several times a year, uh, so uh, to help it keep going, but it, because it's free, but. Uh, what I would say is Wikipedia is a great encyclopedia. So what's wrong with Wikipedia? Nothing. It's a great encyclopedia. However, from the first moment I stepped foot in a college, which was 1980, uh, zero, 1980, I learned one important rule about college life. You should never cite an encyclopedia article in a college paper. Let me underline that again. You should never cite an encyclopedia article in a college paper. Uh, you just don't. Uh, you know, because you want to go back to a primary source and your professors want you to look at primary sources. Uh, so the answer really is, should you use Wikipedia in college? Heck yes. It's a great place. Should you use it uh, as a reference in a paper? Oh, no way. That's bad. Uh, but Wikipedia is a great uh, starting place but it's not the end product. That is, it's a good place to start, but it's not a good place to end up. Uh, so for example, let's say you were doing a, uh, a paper on the defensive attribution hypothesis. I would encourage students to start by looking at the Wikipedia page. And I assume that you have no idea what it is, so here this can give you a very brief summary of what it is so you understand it. But then also, uh, here are references. And if you continue on in the article and go down to the bottom of the page, they have a bibliography where you can read uh, articles or books about it. And then they also have the actual citations, the references for the citations in the text. 
And so what you can do is you can click through and read one of these. This is an excellent start to any paper, any research paper. Uh, and professors should be telling students this is an excellent tool on the internet. You should be using it all the time. Uh, so pro tip, you can use ideas from Wikipedia in a college paper. Uh, however, you have to read the primary source to assure yourself that Wikipedia got it correct. That is, you can't trust an encyclopedia, you can't trust Wikipedia in a college paper. Uh, so what that means basically is that you can't use the same words as Wikipedia and you have to read and cite the primary source. But Wikipedia makes that very easy. Uh, let's say uh, here's a quote from Wikipedia. The Wikipedia article up here is kind of small, sorry. A defensive attribution may also be used to project a person's self-esteem if, despite everything, the mishap does occur because blame can be assigned to the other person or situation. Uh, that's kind of awkward. Uh, if you click on number two, that'll take you here. And whoops, you actually have to go to the library to look this up, but if you do, uh, you can see, you can read the original article, and this gobbledygook, which is correct, but kind of wordy from the uh, author of Wikipedia, uh, becomes very clear when you look at Kelly Shaver's original text. Uh, he concluded that people will create a set of beliefs to protect their self-esteem in case they cause or suffer from an accident. And if you read Shaver's original article, you can uh, get a better understanding of what the uh, Wikipedia editor was trying to say. Uh, and, uh, you know, then again, you paraphrase what Shaver was saying, and that should go in a paper, a student paper in college. There. Oh, also, a uh, very, very, very important pro tip, do the same thing with literature reviews. Uh, go to them when you start out a new paper or project and uh, find a literature review on the topic and uh, look at it. And it has all of those references in it that you can look up. That's the easiest way to start a research project. Okay, so uh, that's a spacer. Now let's move on to problems with information from the internet, fake news. Fake news is, as the name implies, news that is intentionally created uh, to be fake. Not that it's a joke, but it's uh, people expect you to take the news real. They want to, you know, uh, masquerade as a real news source. And for some reason or another, they want you to believe the false information is real. Uh, for example, this looks like a really professional site, maybe a news site. Warning, prolonged f use of face masks produce hypoxia. That is, if you wear one of these face masks for a long period of time, your blood oxygen level drops and you may pass out or maybe even die. Now, of course, this is totally uh, fake. Uh, and false. There's no evidence behind it. Uh, you know, uh, you know when people were uh, freaking out in May about this uh, on Facebook, one of my cousins posted something about how you know if you wear a face mask, you'll pass out after a while. And I was feeling kind of ornery, so I replied to her and I said, "Yeah, I know. Uh, when I woke up from uh, my." Uh, last surgery, I discovered that I was uh, the only person alive in the operating room. All of the uh, doctors and nurses who were wearing face masks had died from hypoxia. And uh, so it's obviously not true, but somebody wants you to believe this is true for some reason. How do you evaluate if something is fake or not on the internet? Uh, well, uh, here's the crap test. Currency, relevance, authority, accuracy and purpose. Oh, thank you, folks. Uh, and this comes from, uh, you know, the California State uh, University Library uh, in Chico. And, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, look this up on the internet now, but you can see that there are basic ways 
in which you evaluate uh, the website. And so you can go back to a website like this and apply the crap test to see if it's crap. And here's bigger. I don't know why I put it there because I'm going to ask you to go look it up on the internet. Uh, also, the International Federation of Asso Library Associations and Institutions give you this graphic on how to spot fake news. Consider the source, read beyond, check the author, supporting sources, check the date, is it a joke, check your biases, ask a professional. And in any of these cases, Google is your friend, or any type of uh, search engine is your friend. Google keywords uh, in the uh, article, or in the article headline, uh, or names in the article. Try to find the original source of the information. Many times, truthful news sources are copied from one website to another. And a lot of websites make their living on just taking what the New York Times or uh, the uh, Washington Post write and just rewriting it and putting it on their website. And so try to find the original source of the information. And then once you find those original sources, uh, what does Wikipedia have to say about the Washington Post versus the Washington Times? two very, very different sources. Uh, and also, what can Wikipedia tell you about some of the key terms or key tom concepts? That is hypo hypoxia. Uh, you could Google hypoxia and go to the Wikipedia page on that and see what it says and see if, uh, based on what Wikipedia says, it makes any sense that wearing a mask can make you pass out and die. And then, also, for checking out the websites, you can go to uh, you know, these websites that are designed to find uh, uh, you know, fake news on, other, on the internet and report it. So I often go to Snopes or PolitiFact and, you know, and enter into their search engine what I'm looking at to find out whether or not it's fake news or not or what they say about that. And then, uh, finally, I say, well, what about good information? Well, uh, in good information on the internet, you want to know if it's a trusted source. And how do you know if it's a trusted source? Uh, whether or not the source has any authority. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And whether or not they're using appropriate methodology. And I'll talk about that in a minute also. So you want to have definitely something from a trusted source and you want to be able to uh, make sure that's reliable so you want to have two independent supporting sources so you want to get at least two independent supporting sources uh, this is pretty easy to understand you just look for something that's separate excuse me that's another trusted source and if they agree with each other, then you're good to go. But what do I mean by authority or methodology? Authority is kind of sticky uh, in that you just have to uh, you know, use your common sense. And to use your common sense, you need to develop a uh, you know, understanding or knowledge about things. And so, for example, uh, you know, when I look at uh, you know, news and I want to evaluate it, I look at the source. And I know, for example, uh, the difference between Wonkette, uh, the New York Post, and Reuter News. And in fact, uh, you know, the news I watch in the morning every morning while I'm having breakfast is Reuters. Uh, because as you can see here, this chart rates them as mostly reliable and also a neutral political bias. Uh, and uh, the New York Post is unreliable and it has a I can't believe they're saying it has a uh, oh no talking about the post not the daily m news no I yeah it is the post I can't believe they're saying it's kind of rightish it's very rightish uh, I'd say the same level as Fox News uh, but you know you may not have this so what I'm gonna say to you is start 
remembering. Start remembering what you learn about these sources. Uh, it's not that you can just do an assignment and forget about it. Uh, being a college student means that you're going to remember this stuff. So remember what you're running into and you know, keep in mind that there's a difference between NBC and CBS, at least in their uh, political bias, and that InfoWars is just trash, along with the Palmer Report. Oh boy, is that trash. You know, it's left, so it makes me feel good, but it's, it's trash. Okay, and uh, so, uh, you know, you can say something has authority if you recognize their names in a good way. Oh, you know, Reuters or ABC News or PBS. Yeah, now you, you know, they say something, they have authority, and so you can, you can trust them, or they are trustworthy. And you know this from experience. Or, if you don't know that from experience, look up in a trustworthy source. This comes from, like, the National Association of Librarians or something like that. Look up in a trustworthy source uh, whether or not you can trust AP News and whether or not uh, it has a political bias. Uh, and then again, another thing you can do is research the names and the sites uh, and Google it. And, uh, you know, Google AP News bias or AP News reliability, MSNBC bias. Google that, see what pops up. But then go to the Wikipedia page. And what does Wikipedia say about NBC, uh, MSNBC? Uh, so again, it's researching the sites and developing a sense of what you know is good and going to those as your go-to sources. So that's what I mean by authority. And in the course, we can also talk about authority in different fields. And indeed, uh, for example, if I say something, I'm an authority. Uh, if, for example, the president of the American Psychological Association says something, they're an authority. Uh, if a professor at Harvard University in the psychology department says something, uh, they're an authority, generally, unless you recognize their name in a bad way. So there you go. And then good information by methodology. And uh, this table pretty much explains the hierarchy of scientific evidence and the methodologies that are related to the stronger or the weaker types of evidence. And of course, uh, not scientific evidence, YouTube videos, personal anecdotes, gut feelings, uh, info wars, of course it's trash, uh, and uh, you know, green med health, etc. Uh, so that's not even on this pyramid. So let's talk about what's on the pyramid. Uh, and so uh, down here at the weakest, we have case reports, opinion uh, papers, and letters. And I would categorize these as non-empirical and non-peer-reviewed. Uh, you will find them when you do a psych info search, uh, but they are at the lowest level of uh, the lowest level of uh, the, the pyramid of psychological evidence. Uh, then, uh, you know, these, the animal trials, the, uh, you know, uh, test tube studies, in vitro means test tube, or in, uh, you know, uh, test tube studies, uh, cross-sectional studies, case-controlled studies, cohort studies. Uh, these should be empirical, uh, peer-reviewed in primaries, uh, primary, uh, but these methodologies usually have weak internal validity. Uh, so they're not really producing very trustworthy data. Uh, of course, do I have like a, no I don't, I have to write with my mouse, which I can't do. Uh, you know, the pseudo experiments, oh boy, pseudo experiments that's what these are. Uh, these are the uh, you know, quasi-experiments and the quasi-experimental methods. Once you got, get up into some types of cohort studies, but especially randomized controlled trials, 
Now we're talking about internal validity being strong. These are the classic experiments that we treat, teach you about. Uh, and that's pretty high up there. Uh, but that's only one study. And the meta-analyses and the systematic reviews, uh, which I've talked about briefly, these are the highest levels because what they do is they summarize many of these studies and usually many of these uh, strongly internally valid studies. So uh, just applying some of what you know about research methodology will allow you to be able to evaluate uh, the uh, methodology of facts that you find. And don't be confused like Captain Picard here. So uh, that's it for fake news and for uh, internet literacy. I'll see you for some at some point the next part uh, which is uh, what's going on currently with research and research journals. Bye-bye.